Friday now viewers. So went ahead, came on so that I could tell you all the joke that I have for you all today. This is courtesy of my cousin Brenda. All right. It goes as follows. With all of the new technology regarding fertility recently, a 65 year old friend of mine was able to give birth. When she was discharged from the hospital and went home, I went to visit. May I see the new baby? I asked. Not yet, she said. I'll make coffee and we can visit for a while. Thirty minutes had passed and I asked, May I see the new baby now? No, not yet, she said. After another few minutes had elapsed, I asked again, May I see the baby now? No, not yet, replied my friend. Growing very impatient, I asked, Well, when can I see the baby? When he cries she told me. When he cries? I demanded. Why do I have to wait until he cries? Because I forgot where I put him. <laughs> and so with us going through Abraham and and um, Sarah having a baby at the age of 190, I can see Sarah saying the same thing. All right. Um, let's see. Jokes from yesterday. I don't know if I remember any of them offhand and we don't have uh, much time left anyway so let me go ahead and remind you all about knitted knockers all right again I've I've done this before but n there may be new viewers or people's lives may have changed or you may have encountered someone who um, actually could use these so these are knitted knockers and these are um, something that a filling that you can put into your bra if you've had a mastectomy okay so they come in sizes A through D they can come in a variety of colors as well and if you are interested in them you can either reach out to me or if you don't want to reach out to me you can go to knittedknockers.org k-n-i-t-t-e-d-k-n-o-c-k-e-r-s dot org and you can request them from there okay so I wanted to put that out there and that is courtesy of an organization that my sister Tina belongs to so I say thank you to them. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this morning thanking you and praising you, God, for who you are, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we can chuckle and, and, and laugh at things that you do, Father. Um, having a child at the age of 90, I know times were different back then, Lord, but I can't even imagine it, Father. Lord, I come to you on this day asking that you would be with us as we sit at your feet right now, Lord God. No other way to start our Friday than at the feet of Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would just take over this Bible study, Lord, that I would just be the mouthpiece that you use, Father, but that it would be your words that come out, Lord. I know truly, Father, that I am accountable for every single thing that I say when it comes to your word, Father. So please, Lord God, would you just take over for me? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we are doing Genesis chapter 22. We're going to start reading at verse 9, even though we covered that yesterday. Today. We will read 9 through 14 and then we will come back and discuss starting with verse 12. I'm reading from the King James Version. All right. It reads as follows. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. All right, so when we stopped on yesterday, we had already talked about Abraham going up to the mountain and sacrificing Isaac. And I was saying that, you know, I am so glad that the angel of the Lord called out of heaven and didn't just whisper something in Abraham's ear, telling him not to do it, because I truly think Isaac, 
Isaac needed to hear this, you know, um, being bound by your own dad and looking to sacrifice him. You know, um, it, it's got to be like PTSD. It's got to work on the psyche, right? And again, there's no telling or not again, but there is no telling what story he went back and told his mom, right? So let's go ahead and pick up with verse 12. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. All right? And don't forget that if you see something in italics, it was not there in the original manuscript. So it could read, or it did read in the original, uh, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only, from me. All right? And so you know how parents have favorites you know they shouldn't but parents do have favorites and so this did not necessarily say thine only son it said thine only from me all right so when it comes to fearest in the Hebrew that word is yare yare and it means to revere or to be afraid of and so this is not oh my gosh I'm terrified of God because of who he is this is I respect him you know your parents you should respect them um, by fearing them basically uh, the same thing goes for I don't know um, the president you shouldn't be terrified of what he's going to do but you should fear him out of respect okay your commanding officer or what have you all right and so that's what this is saying verse 13 and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son all right so after all this Abraham still goes ahead and worship that's what they went up to the mountain to do that is what they do it said that he looked up uh, or lifted up his eyes there's a verse talking about look to the hills from whence cometh my help my help comes from the Lord all right so he he lifted up his eyes and he looked and he saw this ram in the thicket all right verse 14 and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen all right Jehovah Jireh is actually pronounced Jehovah Ra'a Jehovah Ra'a and it means to see or to appear all right and so you are able to view what it is that you needed you might not have seen it before but now you see it all right Jehovah has provided all right let's go ahead and go to verse 15 and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the out of heaven the second time and said by now uh, let's try this again. All right. I don't know what I'm reading. Verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, then in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. All right. And so God is just uh, reaffirming with Abraham what it is that he told him to begin with, that he would have descendants as many as or you, in, innumerable. So you couldn't count them like you can't count the sand on the sea nor the stars in the sky okay um, and he's saying that basically he's going to bless him multiply him and then it says that he will possess the gate of his enemies all right that means that you can control what is in your life all right and with God that is possible without God it is not possible because Satan is going to come at you every way he can all right so with God I am able to um, shut my eyes or close the gate to the things that I shouldn't be watching on TV things I shouldn't be looking at on the internet things I shouldn't be um, talking to men about or what have you okay so it definitely Definitely takes Christ in order to be able to control the gates of your enemies. 
or to possess them. Verse 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. And so that blessing comes in the form of Jesus Christ. All right. Verse 19. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. All right, let's go ahead and go to verse 20. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor, Huz his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Camuel the father of Aram, and Chesed, and Hazel, and Pildash, and Jidlaf, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begot Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Ruma. She also bare Teba, and Gaham, and Thahash, and Maka. All right. And so just like a couple chapters ago, I'm not going to go over all of these names because all of these names are not important for later, but some of them are. And that's what we're going to go over. All right, before we do, um, I wonder if in verse 19, where it says Abraham dwelt at Beersheba, I wonder if Isaac dwelt there too, or if he just had to walk away for a minute and collect his thoughts about what he thought of his daddy, right? All right, so verse 20. And it came to pass after these things that it was told to Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath born, she hath also born children unto thy brother Nahor. All right, and so. Uh, this is going to be important because Abraham is going to go and uh, have somebody go and find a wife for Isaac. And because of when Sarah ended up having Isaac, how old she was, uh, the children or the person that's going to be good for Isaac is not going to be somebody that is Abraham's niece, but it's going to be like a great niece because again of the age difference. All right, so in verse 21, it says, Camuel, the father of Aram. Aram is important um, in the Bible, it, and everybody is important, all right? Even you and I are important, but it is important for understanding things later. It is pronounced Aram, Aram, and it's where Balak was from. If you know anything about a donkey talking, at one point, it is Balak's donkey that talks, all right? And so that's where he was from, and um, Aram, Aram means exalted or the highland, all right? So this is also Syria and Mesopotamia. So whenever you hear them talk about Syria or Mesopotamia, they're talking about Aram, all right? You know how it is. It used to be uh, Miles Road, and now it's Martin Luther King Boulevard or something like that, right? Uh, people change names of streets because of different things that go on. They do the same thing with cities. And um, this is where the Aramaic language comes from. So the Bible was mainly written in Greek and Hebrew, but some of it was written in Aramaic, and that's where this comes from. So if we look for um, Aram today, it is modern day Syria, southeastern Turkey, and parts of Lebanon and Iraq. All right. So. And then if we jump down to verse 23, it says, And Bethuel begot Rebekah. All right. And Rebekah is the one that Isaac is going to end up marrying. Rebekah is pronounced Rivka, Rivka, and it means ensnarer. And it also means to clog by tying up the fetlock. And I'm like, what in the world is a fetlock? So I had to look it up. And if you look at a horse, right above its hoof is like this little piece that like goes like an L on the back of their leg. It is if you bind up those on a horse, then you make it as to where he gets tripped up. All right. So you ensnare him. And that's what Rivka, Rebecca's name means. All right. And that's actually what she ends up being later on in life is a an, an ensnarer um, to her oldest son. So let's go ahead and that is it for 22. We are going to verse 20, uh, chapter 23. 
And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. So it is said that Sarah is the only female in the Bible whose age is recorded at death. All right. Um, I have not studied the Bible. I read the Bible a couple of times, but I haven't studied it to see whether or not that is true. But it has been said that she is the only one whose um, death uh, age of death is recorded. So she's 127 years old. So depending on whether Abraham and Isaac have had birthdays or not, and then Abraham is approximately 137 years old and Isaac is 37. All right. Ishmael would be 51. Verse 2. And Sarah died in Kerjath Arba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. All right, we can do real quickly. Kerjath Arba is pronounced Kiriyah, Kiriyah, and it just means a city in Arba. And then Hebron is pronounced Hebron, Hebron, and it means association. It is located in South Judah, approximately 20 miles south of Jerusalem, and approximately 20 miles north of Beersheba. All right, so we will go ahead and end here. And Lord willing, see you on Monday. We will pick up then with verse 3. Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking and praising you for who you are, Lord God. We ask that you would be with us as we go throughout this weekend, Lord. You know the different events that we have going on, whether it's for our children, Lord God, whether it's for ourselves, Father, whatever it is, Lord, we just ask for your protection, Lord God. We ask that you would please, Lord God, be with those that are trying to flee Ukraine, Lord God. Be with those that are staying to fight, Lord. We know, Lord, that there will be wars and rumors of wars. We know that the world is going to get worse before it gets better when your son comes back the second time, Father. We ask, Lord God, that you would help us, Lord, to be able to endure, Father. Help us to give hope to those that have no hope, Lord God. Help us to uh, remind people, Father, of of just your son, Lord God, the way, the truth, and the life, Lord God. Um, and, and just keep us encouraged, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I love you all. Lord willing, I will see you all on Monday.